Hello everybody and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramp. Today's a little bit different. We're having a lot of technical difficulties with a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and a whole lot of uh, black and white going on here. Um, but I am hopefully uh, recording onto the computer system so um, you can look forward to uh, the system crashing um, during my live show. <laughs> so let's get this thing started. The weather, um, so here's what I'm talking about today. I got a couple guests from the Agile Rascal Bicycle Touring Theater. Um, they're going to be talking about uh, their touring theater group um, and their their gimmick is that they're on bicycles when they travel from place to place it's like any other touring group but in their case they're talking about sustainability and protecting the earth that we hold so dear so anyways let's talk um, but there's I got some pre-critic talking about some terrible movies that are coming out this weekend um, I get some city council I got um, a bunch of news items which include health care the local economy and sexual assault so we'll get to that in a bit but let's kick off with a little bit of weather Currently, it is 61 degrees outside. It's going to get a high of 90 degrees with that 20% chance of thunderstorms. There's going to be a lot of smoke up in the air. Um, tonight, you can expect those showers to kind of continue. Um, but, of course, they're going to be 20%, so there might be in spotted areas. So just be aware of that. Um, Saturday, it's going to be mostly sunny with a high of 94 degrees. So if you guys are planning on going to the lake, going floating, or doing anything like, like, thing, anything like that, this will be the weekend for you to be out and about. Um, so that pretty much does what you guys need to know about the weather. It's going to be a beautiful weekend um, tonight. I don't know. I mean, but then again, it's like the smoke is in the air and it's a moderate conditions. Last time I checked on the Missoula County Health Department and you can find the air quality in Missoula by going to the Missoula County Health Department. Um, let's talk about some news items that are happening in the local economy. The earnings in Montana have plunged 71% from 2015 to 2016 due to historic drops in the prices for wheat, cattle, and other com commodities. After reaching historic heights in 2014, cattle prices collapsed to less than half of what they have been in the fall of 2016, meaning many ranchers were losing money on their investment. The prices for wheat, the state's leading cash crop, also fell by half of what they thought were the l years before. Agriculture in Montana is the largest industry, creating $4.6 billion in revenue in 2015. So the, um, so the drop in farm earnings have had and will continue to have ripple effects across the state's economy. Um, Missoula economy, according to the Missoulian, is based on health care, and everybody knows how that's going. Uh, <laughs> moving on, um, in the state, um, Yellowstone National Park, 10 people at Yellowstone National Park were, are are being charged with sexual assault when a woman uh, when women were uh, found being sexually assaulted in the maintenance division of the Yellowstone Park. Superintendent Dan Wink told the uh, Associated Press potential penalties will range from reprimand to suspension or termination. The move comes as the National Park Service's image has been tarnished by the widespread reports of sexual assault, bullying, and other misconduct at parks, including Yellowstone, Yosemite. Um, Canaveral National Seahorse sea and um, Grand Canyon. The Yellowstone investigation was launched when a park employee complained in the Montana Pioneer magazine and to members of Congress that a pervasive men's club environment encouraged the exploitation and abuse of female workers. Um, and this is f from an article in the Billings Gazette, and of, of course you could pr probably see in the Missoulian as well. They're owned by the same people. Um, in national news, John McCain, uh, this is from NPR.org. John McCain voted no for the health care bill, potentially killing any hope for repeal that the Trump administration and others in the sector of the GOP members who have hoped to get rid of o Obamacare altogether um, have basically failed. McCain, who was diagnosed with brain cancer and returned to Washington to advance the health care bill, turned around and bucked his party's leadership in President Trump by joining two moderate Republicans and every Democrat in voting against the so-called skinny repeal of the Affordable Care Act. Basically, the the Better Care Act was dead. That was kind of like the big health care thing that the Senate basically rewrote and did. And then, of course, they had th um, four other chances to do it. Um, three of the chances were to replace it with the uh, uh, American Health Care Act, and the other one was just basically repeal Obamacare altogether. But uh, many Republicans said that they would not repeal Obamacare unless there was a clear um, replacement for it. So. So this is um, what um, John McCain said in a statement. From the beginning, I have believed that Obamacare should be repealed and replaced with a solution that increases competition, lower costs, and improve the care for the American people. The so-called skinny repeal amendment the, sen uh, amendment the Senate voted on today would not accomplish those goals, and said McCain in the statement. 
Of course, some of the motivations for McCain is uh, that he could have had an extra grind from the beginning uh, from a 2015 comment that um, Trump said. Um, Trump said, in, and I quote, he's not a war hero. He was a war hero because he was captured. I like people who were, I don't, I like people who weren't captured. He's been losing so long, he doesn't know how to win anymore. So that's something he said in the 2015 against John McCain. So um, so that's kind of what's happening in the national news. I have a couple guests from the uh, Agile Rascal Theater, and I'll be inviting them on after this short little PSA. Hey, welcome back. I'm here with Sam and Jackie, and they're here with from the Agile Rascal um, Bicycling Theater Group. So, um, oh, in Missoula, it, we're a very strong bicycle community here yes. as well. But yeah. also, we have uh, the Missoula Children's Theater, which is a big uh, draw internationally with oh, a lot yeah. of people in theater. So it's great to kind of blend a lot of cool little elements there as well. But um, from what I've, from what you've told me, is that it's basically you guys are a traveling by, uh, theater group but you get to place to place on bicycle. Can you, uh, can you right. tell us a little bit more about what people can expect from your shows? Yeah, of course. Uh, it's a show for all ages. It's free. Uh, there's eight of us total. And we, we met up in Great Falls and we had a five week residency and we created an original show. And it's got music and dance and it's funny. It's kind of sad. Um, and, it's got uh, all the feelings. Yeah, <laughs> we tug at the heartstrings. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh, but then, uh, then after five weeks of making the show, we uh, packed it up on our bicycles and we hit the road. And we've been to Haver, Lewistown, Billings, Bozeman. Now we're here in. Uh, we stopped in Helena. Uh, now we're here in uh, Missoula. And then we're gonna head up to Eureka, then to Whitefish. Back over the Continental Divide. That's right. To, uh, Great Falls. <laughs> yeah, gonna so, do some climbing. Yeah. Um, where is this uh, show happening in Missoula? Here in Missoula, it's at Free Cycles. Yep. Yeah, and that's going to be uh, tonight. That's Friday, the 28th. And it's going to be an 8 <laughs> o'clock show. Mm -hmm. Nice. But they're doing a big event. They're selling yeah. some bikes. It's a barbecue. barbecue. Yeah. yeah. They got a band playing. Yeah. So yep, it, 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 that's starting around 6. It should be a big, like, all night event. Yeah. yeah. And Free Cycles always has a lot of great uh, things happen there as well. Cool. And Free Cycles is a great place for a lot of people to go. Of course, I know Bob Dew down there. And oh, yeah. Nice. yeah they're having a big bike sale today, too. He's yeah. like, yeah, like, yeah um, roundabouts. He's all about yeah. the roundabouts. So if you want a good topic, you just say roundabouts. roundabouts. <laughs> and then he would talk to you about an hour and a half, an hour and a half about how it's like the best thing in the world. But anyways, let's get back to the theater <laughs> stuff. So um, you guys have a website, and um, I can show the website as well. Can you uh, kind of talk about um, what people can get by logging on to um, agilerascaltheater.com? Yeah. Yeah, uh, hop on there. We've got a gallery, um, some videos from our uh, inaugural tour, which was cross country from San Francisco to New York. Um, so some show pictures from that, a little bit of uh, the photos we've been taking on our journey uh, here in Montana. 
Um, we've got a blog going. Um, our artistic director, Dara Silverman, has been writing a blog about our process and uh, how we've gotten from there to there and uh, some, you know, sticky things that have gone awry along the way. So it's <laughs> kind of fun to, like, check out, you know, what goes wrong on a bicycle tour. <laughs> we also have our, our show schedule on there, too. Mm -hmm. So if you need more information about where we're going to be, what time our shows are. And there's also information on there on how to donate to Agile Rascal That's Theater. That's right. We're a non for profit, so we survive um, solely on donations. And we did a big fundraiser before we even started the project. And uh, people just came out of the woodwork, um, and people have been very generous, both on the road and off. Yeah. And, you, uh, and you're also charging for this event well, as well. Tonight. It's a free event. Wow. Um, yeah. We are taking donations at the event itself, however. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, we make a big pitch at the end. Yeah. With tickets. <laughs> We're like, give us money. We need money <laughs> for the road. Uh, and uh, how long again how, has this been going on? How long is this? Sh it's a it, the tour itself is a six week tour. Uh, Agile Rascal started up about uh, two years ago. Yeah, a couple years ago, and then they did their first tour in two thousand fifteen. Right. Yeah. So um, let's see. Uh, what kind of what can you tell me about your individual parts? You guys are in the show as well. We yeah. are in the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, Jackie here plays like. I, if there was like a main character <laughs> or a protagonist, that would be her part. It's a very ensemble-driven show, Definitely. however. Um, but, I, but I play her trusty sidekick. Yes. Cool. Or she's my sidekick. We're each other's sidekicks. We're each other's sidekicks. <laughs> That's the line of the show. So from what you kind of told me, without spoiling too much, um, you guys told me that uh, it's about an environment, but the um, kind of like the uh, unrenewable resource is sound? Yes. Yeah, yes. yeah. It's, it's about a town uh, called Resonance where they mine sound out of the ground. Like you would coal or fossil fuel or anything yeah. like that. So that's their main industry. Yeah, so of course the turning point is uh, something happens and the sound is running out. Oh. So what happens when the sound starts to run out? Is that kind of like where you start off with like uh, like a lot of music, a lot mm -hmm. of things going on there, and then there's less music towards the end and it's like, there's no more sound. Yeah. That's what right. you get. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of original music composed by Jaron Feely, who's our composer in the in the group. Yeah. Um, you must have a lot of equipment when you guys travel around. So how, like, yeah. you guys, like, w what kind of uh, instruments, what kind of uh, music styles are going to be presented? Well, we got a banjo, we that got a saxophone, saxophone um, a big amp, some amplified electronic music as yeah. well. He's got um, a, a thing called a push. It's like a little square with a bunch of buttons yeah. on it. It's like a little beat machine and... Uh, and yeah, we also we use, uh, uh, use buckets, buckets as drums. <laughs> nice. Too. Yeah, we got drumsticks. Yeah, uh, it's, it's pretty loud. It can, yeah, it's pretty loud. And, and there's a lot of variety in the show yep. as far as sound and music goes. All right. So um, once again, just reminding you guys that these guys will be here tonight at 8 p.m. at Free Cycles performing yeah. their show. And um, your show is uh, part of the Agile Rascal um, Bicycling Touring theater group. That's right. That's we right. tour on bicycles. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, That's thank really you so cool. much. Is there anything else you guys want to say before we go? Uh, no, if you're uh, if you're in Eureka, if you're in Whitefish. Or no family or yeah. friends there uh, with kids especially. It's really a kid-friendly show. Um, please spread the word. Go to our website. We're on Facebook at Agile Rascal Bicycle Touring Theater. Instagram at Agile Rascal Theater. Uh, also on Twitter. Yeah, and if you know anyone in Great Falls, we're going to be headed back there, back to where we started. Um, and our, August 11th is our last show, so that's, that'll be your last chance to check us out. And if you see us on the road, say hi, like wave. You can't miss us. It's, we're an eight-person train of <laughs> yeah. giant packed bicycles. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. And uh, thank you to Adventure Cycling for letting us come by and weigh in our bikes yesterday yeah. and taking pictures of us. I uh, really appreciate that. And thank you to Free Cycles because, I mean, not uh, only are they uh, hosting our uh, venue, uh. but they're letting us sleep there. So <laughs> we're camping out at Free Cycles, and it's an awesome place yeah. for sure. So if you guys want more information, you go to AgileRascalTheater.com. Um, you can find them on probably Facebook and all sorts of uh, wonderful um, social media websites as well mm -hmm. by looking up Rascal. Yeah. Agile Rascal. Ag Agile Rascal. Agile yeah, Google Rascal. Agile Rascal. Yeah. We'll come up. Look us up. Well, thanks for joining me, guys. Thank you, Scott. And, uh, yeah, thanks for good luck on your show, Break a Leg. Thank appreciate you. It. Summer is almost over, and MCAT Saturday drop-ins are starting up again. Join a team of highly skilled local media artists as they get your kids' experience in stop motion, source filmmaker, live action, and much, much more. Every Saturday starting in September from 1 to 5 p.m. for only $10 per kid, your kid can create short films and be a part of a growing youth film community. For more information, you can call us at 542-6228, or you can go online at MCAT.org.
matter what you're planning. If you plan to drink, plan to have a friend get you home. Get ride home ideas and tools at plantolive.mt.gov. Hey, what's up? I'm back, and I'm here to talk about all the... Uh, let's see, let me just double check this thing. Okay, so I'm pretty sure you guys can hear me, but um, welcome back, and I'm here to talk about a little thing called Terrible Movies. Um, here is Pre-Critic. Nope! That's Pre-Critic. All right, so, you know, I, I know, like, some of you are like, like, oh, you know, Legos, they've been around in our lives forever. Why not make a movie about your cell phone emoji items and whatnot? So it's, a, it's about that time again where we take a popular character from a place and put them in a movie where all sorts of immature hilarity ensues. Uh, the emoji movie starring a group of actors as they take themselves seriously in this animated comedy uh, about talking faces who must come to terms with their identities. It's kind of like Divergent, but with like faces. Watch this imaginative journey through your phones as they try to do stuff for some reason, and then in the end, it's not what you, it's not who you are that defines you, it's who you are. Ba but if you go to this movie, then you're no longer defined as a smart person. <laughs> That's that's like cutting deep. Um, they're looking um, to cast a female James Bond, but isn't that's why they have these kind of movies? I mean, like it's like it's like w why do you have to like put a tag on it? And that's what people do with this female mo uh, with this female made movie, or the female John Wick, or the female blah blah blah, or the female based on a man, that kind of stuff. Okay, did I mention she's female? Because she's a female. So, anyways, um, when this uh, atomic blonde is what this movie is called, and this movie is about an action star female role. They uh, tend to be uh, kind of one-dimensional, but if you actually look at a lot of the uh, male-led action movies, they're also one-dimensional too. Th it's very just like generic, by the books. Um, but anyways, um, you know, uh, there, there's also another, There's oh, there, they, they make movies like this every like five, ten years or so, but the last kind of like main movie I can remember is probably like Hunger Games. Um, that's a good example of a strong female lead. There's also, um, um, Gina Davis. Gina Davis made a movie. It's called The Long Kiss Goodnight, and basically it's the same thing. I mean, it's a, a lot of the same thing of where she's like a super BA assassin person, whatever, and um, she's just trying to survive in the world or blah, 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 and stuff like that. So that's kind of like what it is. But if you're looking for a popcorn movie, then this is the movie for you. But, you know, um, I wouldn't listen to the people who are saying it's, it's like female James Bond, female this. It should just be a movie. I don't know. I was actually um, really sick when I wrote this, so I have no idea what I'm talking about. Um, another movie is as the is as if as if the first movie um, is incon inconvenienced us comes a sequel, which follows the struggle of Oscar and Nobel Prize winni winner Al Gore on his journey to save the world. In it, we see how much changed and how much stayed the same in these series of films that make people guilty for basically living in a first world country. This is a documentary whose, con whose conflict follows Donald Trump, and of course, um, Donald Trump tweets something and you can make a documentary about it, why not? Um, attempt to get rid of the EPA and anything else that is addressing climate change. At the point, it is a tested fact, and now, the only way to deal with global warming is through politics. Um, if they uh, poison the water hole, I'm assuming someone will have to deal with it. But one thing is for sure is that if you have to, you have to deal with this movie. Um, <laughs> I'm I'm not one way or another. I don't honestly. It's not my dealio. Uh, I don't know. Why I'm getting too opinionated because when you watch a documentary, it's just like you. It's like you have to have an opinion. It's like you watch a documentary. It's like oh, it's 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 like long formatted news. It's ba that's what basically a uh, documentary is. It's like a news article, news items that they really expand upon. Like and then they get a bunch of experts and they talk really in depth about it. That's a documentary for you in a nutshell. But. I have another um, documentary I'm going to present to you guys. It's called Haunted Tape, and it's made by the kids of our media camp that we did of our very first week of our five summer camp week um, dealio that's happening here in um <laughs> at MCAT. So next week, MCAT will be doing a zombie camp. Um, th I look forward to it, and I'm also kind of worried, but I'm also kind of excited. It's it's a mixed feeling, so we'll 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 see how that turns out. Because next Friday, um, I c I because all next week. I will not be doing Wake Up Missoula um, because of the zombie camp happening uh, congruently with the time. So anyways, um, here is uh, a summer series, Haunted Tape. 
So, uh, who are you? I'm Joel Johnson. I'm 42 years old, and I collect rare videotapes. And, uh, why are you here? Because I believe one of my tapes is... haunted. Where are we going? We are going to my tape collection, which includes the haunted tape in it. And uh, when did you uh, start thinking that this tape was haunted? When did I start thinking it was haunted? Yeah. The night after I got it. I got it at this old sketchy garage sale. And the night after I got that tape, there was something about it. I watched the tape, weird stuff started happening. See, this is my tape collection. Maybe somewhat small, but if you really want to correct the rare ones, it's, it's very expensive, but this tape right here is the haunted tape. Did you get it? This isn't the first time that Joel has thought that one of his tapes are haunted. Um, let me think. Um, Ghostbusters, Star Wars, er... Uh, some old audition as Doctor Who. So, uh, why do you think this tape is haunted? I mean, what's so special about it? Well, you see, oh, yeah. a few weeks ago, it flew off the shelf. The it just jumped oh, straight off. Sure it didn't fall? No, it didn't fall. I could see it in its so eyes. Like you can this. access it. It was evil. Okay. okay. In my long, illustrious career, I've dealt with hundreds of haunted houses. I've dealt with dozens of ghost ships. I've dealt with haunted tombs. I've dealt with haunted crypts. I've dealt with possessed beings. But in all my years, I must say, professionally, I have never dealt with nor heard of a haunted tape. It seems like it would be such a small vessel for a being to inhabit that, personally, I don't know if it's even possible. Hey, I uh, just talked to the paranormal investigator. He said that your theory about it actually being in the tape is wrong. No, I got footage. I got footage right here. Right really? here. Mm -hmm. I got footage. That, uh, well, um, uh, I don't even really know what to say. That that looked really fake. No, no, that was real. That was, I did not use a fishing line or, a that was real. Look, that if, was hard evidence. If you can't get some proof in, like, a day or two, I'm sorry, I gotta ditch this project. I'll find some proof. I'll find some. No, it's... Closed. Uh, here's a. I guess we might not be filming today. Oh well. Yo, man, where were you yesterday? Uh, what the? I discovered the tape's true power. You know, no man, like, chill man, you kind of creep me out, dude. Do you doubt the tape? It's just a, just a tape, man, like. Yo, 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 yo! Well, that ended abruptly. Uh, now let's uh, continue on with some city council. And if you're wondering what's happening with the city council, you can always look up, look it up yourself by going on to ci.missoula.mt.us. It's a great resource for anybody who is interested in learning more about the city of Missoula 
in its government proceedings. So today, I have three meanings I kind of want to slowly cover, and these are going to be quick because I only have about uh, two quotes for each group. The first one I'm talking about is public works. Uh, this is a really short meeting too, but there was just a lot of information on there because uh, the wastewater treatment plants moves forward into sustainability by basically saving the city $60,000 a year just on heating and power because what they're going to basically do is all the heat that is produced from water treatment facility is going to be used for the water treatment facility. So in a lot of ways it's going to save the uh, city of Missoula um, millions, millions of dollars of money along the way. Um, here is a couple quotes. We're starting off with uh, Stars Sullivan. He talks about the new heating resource that is renewable. Wait, hold on a sec. That's not it. Is it? Yep, that's it. Yeah, this, um, you know, right now we're using uh, approximately 50% uh, of our uh, methane that we produce at the treatment plant for boiler fuel. We don't produce any electricity at all with that. This project um, will utilize 100% of our methane year round, will produce electricity, about 15% of the total demand at the treatment plant. and. Uh, and then the waste, uh, the exhaust heat, um, waste heat will be used to heat the plant. The plant is under a uh, uh, warm water or hot water system uh, loop, so that that exhaust heat will be used for heating. And then we'll also produce, like I say, about 15% of our demand for electricity. All right. So that was uh, kind of like the the. That's basically uh, what it is, um, but um, one of the things that they're trying to do is, is this is going to cost uh, 12, $1.2 million roughly uh, to, uh, to basically, um, to Neely Electronic of Missoula to basically ha make this happen in there as well. And one of the questions that uh, on Brian von Lossberg, a von Brian Lon von Lossberg asks is this: like, um, what is the um, how long will it take for uh, the city of Missoula to start um, reaping the benefits of the money? So this is what Star Sullivan responds to. This comes out of uh, sewer R and D um, replacement and depreciation. Is that that's where that money comes from? And that it's been budgeted, and the money, the money is actually there. So this will save, and we don't know until the system's up and running about our our savings, but it should be. Sixty to eighty thousand dollars a year annual on electrical costs. So conservatively, this is at sixty thousand. That's a just over a twenty-year payback. Um, uh, I think it's about a thirteen to fifteen-year payback. Okay, Michelle. All right. So that was um, basically uh, Jordan Hess asking about how long it would take for the you know it would take for the city of Missoula to. Uh, basically get the money back they put into transferring the system and to be itself sustaining so t uh, 13 to 15 years and then basically um, wastewater treatment plant would be in the green and wastewater treatment plant has basically been glorified as the place where we have the kind of like innovation of wastewater treatment we got all those poplar trees that were planted there from the city of Missoula that um, helps recycle a lot of the um, uh, water in the area and then the, what the city is going to do is going to sell the trees after a couple more years it's a tree farm that they rented from the uh, farmers and they said it's like hey can we uh, plant trees here for 12 15 years or so and they're like yeah sure and so it's kind of like they're renting off the farm so they can have these trees so that's just a little bit of background and these trees will be sold to like ikea because they're uh, poplar hybrid trees that are planted there. So if you ever want to go down there, just go up Mullen Road, go next to the uh, Walmart, not promoting Walmart or anything. But you can check it out. Um, it's, 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 they're moving forward in a lot of different things, but uh, most people only care about the smell. Um, <laughs> but moving on, let's uh, talk a little bit about some public safety and health. And this is something interesting that I was um, noticing about um, the food safety program that was being discussed during this meeting of an update from the health department. Um, Gina Miller, she's an environmental expert, and this is uh, kind of like what she was talking about in terms of like food and health, um, health co uh, you know, like just kind of like health inspections on like restaurants here in town. An important concept, I guess, is that our inspection always is, is sort of a snapshot in time. It's what we see on that day when we go in. It's really just a record of what was going on in the facility at that moment. That doesn't, that doesn't mean that it's not a, a pretty accurate representation of what typically happens in that establishment, but it definitely is just what we saw that day. Um, 
and maybe the last note is our inspections are available online if you if anybody wants to see them we have a link right there on our website and we encourage folks to look around and um, it's, it's easily searchable and I think we started our electronic inspections in 2009 if I'm not mistaken mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so every inspection since 2009 that we've done mm -hmm. should be available in there all right so um, you basically you can look up your favorite restaurant and see how well they, how well they do in the health department uh, front so uh, it's the Missoula County Health Department you just have to look it up and that's how you can find it that's just side note I have another uh, quote this is uh, Shannon Thuralt. Um I totally butcher the name sorry she's uh, she's RS, the Environmental Health Director, um, um, she's basically she's talking about some of the very good about uh, telling people about what they're doing wrong, what they can improve on. But most of the, most of all, it's usually just kind of like saying, "Hey, man, it's like you are doing something wrong. Can you address it?" It's like, "Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't notice that." Okay, cool. So this is kind of uh, what's happening, and this is kind of like what she's going to be talking about. So here is Shannon. And it's like if we're talking about something as like a coving violation, it's because you're doing everything else right. And that's really the message that we want to give them. The other thing is that when we went to electronic inspections in 2009, um, we were unsure about it, but it has made such a difference because of the amount of information that we can now give the operator. So we're usually talking to whoever's in charge that day, who isn't necessarily the person who is in charge of making the changes. And so with the electronic inspections, because we're typing out full sentences and instead of writing cryptic half sentences. Like there was actually an inspection that one of our people did that um, years ago, it said no cooking in the kitchen. And I think what he meant is no cooking was happening during the inspection, but it could have been a directive, don't cook in the kitchen. So <laughs> cook where, outside? No, we don't want you to do that. So, um, but that just doesn't happen as often. You know, things like that can happen anyway, but it doesn't happen as much. Um, anymore but all right so that's kind of like what they're talking about uh, i think the one of the biggest thing that they're uh, really pushing for in terms of your food uh, safety program was to help clarify some languages for some people um who uh some um there might be some many issues that come ar come around like one of the biggest things that are happening in missoula especially is that um, um during a public comment meeting a couple weeks ago that there was somebody who is a food vendor who was complaining that he's basically being um um, find out of his um, job, his, his uh, business in a way. So one of the things that the, the town is having trouble keeping up to code in regards to mobile, mobile vendors who uh, basically do not, don't move. Think about it like this. So um, you have a restaurant and you have to provide utilities like bathrooms and stuff like that, hand washing areas to basically provide for your uh, patrons. But with mobile vendors, they don't need to provide bathrooms because they're mobile and they can pretty much go anywhere, stop anywhere, and be in an area which has amenities nearby. But with a lot of things, a lot of vendors, um, with some vendors um, that they've uh, had a, a deal with, I, don't, I keep on saying deal with, it sounds like so like, but they're the bad guy. But um, the whole idea behind it is that some mobile vendors who don't move and who stay in areas for long periods of times, they have to be hooked up to a utility. And a lot of vendors don't do that. So that's one of the things that they want to move forward is like uh, basically open communication. And I thought that was a pretty interesting um, tidbit that they talked about is that the longer you're in an area for a designated time is that you must provide bathrooms and basic utilities like hand washing stations and whatnot to keep up to code for your food safety health program and of course you can find out more information by going to your public safety and health meeting uh, there's a lot of information this was just a little tidbit I wanted to kind of talk about of what they're kind of given an update this was a discussion item nothing big is happening there but I just wanted to talk about that um, land use and planning is another meeting um, so let's move on to the next uh, meeting. So when uh, the tourist homes um, ordinance passed, counselors uh, voiced interest in receiving an update from staff regarding um, implementation of the ordinance. And it seems useful to hear now from staff regarding how implementation of the ordinance has gone, including feedback from citizens and compliance when um, transpired to the legislature um, and how ordinances proposed in the in other Montana communities have addressed tourist homes. So they talked about this in the land use and planning meeting. I didn't get any quotes. I kind of just kind of skimmed through the meeting. They were just kind of talking about what tourist homes were, 
um, what uh, some things are happening. And I mean, the tourist homes are basically Airbnbs. It's where a lot of people basically um, rent out their houses to people for uh, days at a time. And it's nice because, you know, uh, um, I it's funny, like if you think about it, it's like, oh, I, I can't wait to get out of my house. I'm going to go on vacation. And then they just go to another house in another town. But, you know, it's a never another environment, but it's a nice way to uh, go on vacation and basically go to a place that's uh, basically a temporary home for you. So that's kind of like, I'm not selling tourist homes. I'm just saying that's kind of like wha what's been happening and whatnot like that. So uh, that's kind of what they were talking about, uh, an update. And you can watch that in the land use and planning meeting by logging on to ci.missoula.mt.us. It's a great website. Um, I refer to it all the time. I basically am able to show you and see what's happening and see what's coming up in your city council meetings and whatnot like that. So uh, I'm just kind of rushing through this as fast as I can. Um, let's see. What am I doing next? So let's let me check my little cheat sheet. Um, so I just talked about city council. But now let's talk about some of the new programs um, that you guys can see on MCAT. Um, for the next, for throughout the weekend, we got uh, Tell Us Something uh, featuring a lot of uh, people from the Missoula County um, area talking about stories from On the Road. That's the theme, but also we have a library update from the um, June 29th, and then there's a whole bunch of other things um, making renewables work for you. Um, we got um, all sorts of different cool little uh, meetings and lectures and causes and speeches that people have made throughout uh, this th throughout the last couple months and it's going to be airing on MCAT for your viewing pleasure. You can also log on to MCAT.org to find all those um, videos and more on our video on demands page. You go to channel 180 and I'll watch that. Channel 190 also has all your city council meetings. So we also post a bunch of uh, you, we uh, we mostly p post city council stuff, and we also have a, a couple county commissioners meetings and stuff like that. So you guys can log on to mcat.org to find those resources as well. So without further ado, here's all the new programs you can see this weekend. And when I come back, I'm going to talk about some events. Um, we're actually considering, like, if we have a fourth floor roof deck, actually pr providing a structure that could support solar panels or PVs. So the PVs would actually provide as shading for the roof deck. Um, early on when we were starting to establish some of our project goals, um, discussion of lead and sustainability, um, it can grow out of control pretty quick and we don't have an unlimited budget. Um, this project is going to meet, you know, the 2030 challenge, which is the goals of our partner firm. Um, so this building will actually perform 70% better than the current energy code. Um, in the world of lead, it's a very high performing building. Um, are we going to have a rainwater collection system? Probably not. Energy. Um, we have some ideas, but in order to meet that goal, um, we need your input and your feedback. So do you have creative ideas about how to encourage your fellow Missoulians to save energy? Do you really like to compete with your neighbors and want to want to get into it and figure out who can save the most? Um, can you help us figure out how to take a big leap forward um, or at least figure out some better puns to use? Um, we need your help and, and we would love to work um, c collaboratively because that's I think when the, the best change and the most meaningful change happens. Um, so consider this your invitation. We want you on our team. Please find me or Amy, my colleague, um, afterwards. Sign up outside at Climate Smart's uh, table out there and uh, stay in the loop and help us move forward. Thanks. They start this incredible trek across the desert, which is in um, uh, trucks that break down. There's uh, you know no water. It's there's the smugglers themselves will take take huge advantage of them. There's just story after story about torture, rape, um, extortion. People trying to just take advantage of these people who are trying just trying to get across the desert. Um, and the Eritreans are the biggest group cr making this trek across the, um, the Sahara. Um, they say that 90% of the people who've made this trek have witnessed torture or rape um, or murder. Being, you know, I, I often get calls from people saying, um, I'm married to a foreign spouse and now I want citizenship. 
you know, you, you never jump to citizenship. You always have to get permanent residency, your green card first, and then you are on a pathway towards citizenship. So those are just some of the basic parameters of um, kind of the way our immigration system was set up under the Immigration and Nationality Act. But um, the, the purpose of the Immigration and Nationality Act was, it, you know, one of the primary driving factors of it was for family unification. And so they defined, they, they defined family to, uh, is, uh, to uh, they defined it to give quick status to spouses of U.S. citizens, parents of a U.S. citizen, and minor children who are under 21 um, and unmarried, that they, there's a quick pathway for them. On September 11th, 2001, I was working in a pizza restaurant in Indianapolis, Indiana. Six months earlier, I left my desk on the 103rd floor of the North Tower of the World Trade Center, and I got on a plane to Kathmandu, Nepal, which is where I met Kamal Lama. So there are many things about my job in New York that I do not miss. Um, however, it was kind of amazing to have somebody call me up and be like, you need to take three weeks of paid vacation as soon as possible. Nobody does that for me now. Uh, and I was like, the hell do you want me to do? Fish isn't on tour. <laughs> Turns out there's lots of things you can do with your life besides go on a fish tour. And uh, so I, I was like, I'm just gonna buy a plane ticket to the furthest away place that I can think of. All right, so that was a little test, uh, tease for Tell Us Something uh, from one of the mini stories of On the Road, of uh, people going through journeys in life, uh, both metaphorically and literally, but mostly literally, with uh, trying to come up with metaphoric uh, tones behind it. But um, I'm not like trying to discount any of the stories. Tell Us Something is great. Mark Moss uh, hosts Tell Us Something. It's such a huge event that happens here in Missoula. Um, every, it's like bi-monthly, so it's every other month um, on Tuesdays at the Wilma Theater, and they usually uh, fill up pretty, they, they, they pack the building, just to say the least. All right, so let's talk about some events that are happening in and around the Missoula area. Starting this Friday morning, Tiny Tales is happening at the Missoula Public Library. It happens pretty much most mornings. It's for uh, kids, birth to three years of age. Um, they also have sto uh, family story time for kids who are just a little bit older. Usually they try to get kids uh, still um, engaged in the public library. It's to get um, kids um, active and um, doing stuff like that. My little three-year-old niece, she, she knows how to check out books. She just like has a little checkout thing. She like gets a book, she slaps it down, scans everything. She's like, I'm good. And she's, she barely knows how to talk, but she just knows how to check out books from the public library. I think that's adorable. So that's happening um, there, 10.30 a.m., story time, all sorts of stuff. All, always a story time happening at 10.30 at Missoula Public Library most times. Kids table at the library every weekday. At 11.30, they provide kids free lunch for, um, from 11.30 to about 12, 12.30, and you have to be 18 or younger, and they're always looking for uh, kids or um, young adults to uh, join in and get that free lunch because the more lunches they, um, they get, it also helps uh, the Missoula Food Bank um, uh, expand their services around. So it, just imagine if you get like five uh, more people to do lunch, that could probably allow the USDA who gives the food to the Missoula Food Bank to hire more employees, thus creating more jobs. So basically having a free lunch allows people to create jobs. It's, it's crazy. It's wild. But that's happening at the um, Missoula Public Library pretty much every weekday during the summer. So Robin Hood is going to be at the MCT at 4 p.m. and, and at 6 p.m. Um, just uh, just kind of giving you a, a, a deal. So uh, for, the, for a lot of summer camps, day camps for kids, um, um, they do... Uh, these shows. They practice the whole week and then they perform them on the Friday at 4 and 6 p.m. So 4 p.m. is one group and 6 p.m. is another group. Make sure that if you do have a kid in the play that they're in the right group and then you go to the right show that's in the right group. Excuse me. Um, I'm, having, I'm having a lot of coffee and it's kicking in right now. So kicking in the park, speaking of kicking in, um, Franklin Park is doing a fun-filled family-friendly taekwondo class in the park and they'll be kicking things off with Tiny Tigers, and then they have all ages class at 5 p.m. This is a free event for all ages, and if you have a kid that is interested in fighting or they are very violent and you're looking to help channel that violence into something a little more positive, Twaikondo, twi Twaikondo? Yeah, no, those kind of classes are good to um, basically kind of help um, dispel their energy in positive ways. Um, 
Garden City VBS Family Night, as is at the Missoula Fairgrounds. Um, family activities, inflatables, games, and fun for all. There's no charge. Starting at 5 p.m., Garden City VBA Family Night. Um, the Missoula class of 1967, it's the 50-year class reunion. It's a big deal. Um, usually, it's pretty much when um, Hellgate High School was its own thing. Before, it was like Sentinel. It, it, it was weird because the M MCPS school system was like one high school, and then they had two high schools, and then they had one high school again. And then they had to re basically bring back another high school, and then it, it, it's ridiculous how much you know. Like Hellgate High School, currently used to be nothing, it, and then it used to be like M Missoula County High School, and then it was Hellgate High School, and there was Sentinel, and then uh, and then Sentinel was high school H Hellgate for a while, the building in the area, and then they moved back. It, it was such a weird history of Missoula, but yeah, they're having a 67, 1967, 50 your high school reunion for the people, for the folks who went to high school in Missoula in 1967. And it's going to be a Hilton Garden Inn from 5 to 7 p.m. So if you were in the graduating class of 1967, you can join them. And it's uh, buffet dinner starts at 7. Um, yep, you can contact Lori Bryn at uh, lorybryn60 at gmail.com for more information. Um, so anyways, family... Friendly Friday is at the Top Hat Lounge. Top Hat Lounge hosts uh, fr family, fr friendly, family Friendly Friday from 6 to 8 p.m. But, of course, by 9 p.m., they kick all the kids out for anyone who is under the age of 21. Um, and it's a time where parents and their kids can socialize, listen to music, eat great food, and have fun. Usually kids are running around being all crazy while the parents are, are drinking and just enjoying their uh, spirit-raising drinks. Um, but that's basically what's happening during the Friday um, here are your, uh, some of your late night events happening for your Friday night, if you're interested. Um, also, I just want to give another shout out to uh, Agile Rascal Theater, which will be performing at Free Cycles at 8 p.m. tonight. It's a free show. Um, they are always looking for donations because they are nonprofit, so you can be part of that, and it'll be great. So um, here are some of the other events that are happening tonight. Um, you got um, Armed for Apocalypse, At Home in Hell, Time to Kill at Monks. It's going to be rock music, and judging by the names, it's going to be heavy metal, loud rock. So, And then you got... Parker Millsap at um, Top Hat Lounge. It's going to be folk music, blues. Russ Nassett and the Revelators is going to be at the Union Club. And karaoke is going to be at Lolo Hot Springs Resort. Um, but that's basically um, what's happening with that. On Saturday, you have all your farmer's markets starting in the morning from 8 to 1 p.m. You got Missoula Irish Society annual Rizomi Sale. S no, it's Iris. Sorry, it's not Irish. Sorry, my bad. Iris Gardens at the Historical Museum at Fort Missoula is doing a uh, Rizomi sale. It's a great opportunity to pick and choose from a large selection of colors and um, varieties of iris for your garden at a reasonable price. The Rizomes, oh, it's Rizomes. Oh, I don't know why I said Rizomes, but Rizomes are locally grown in members of gardens or a society display garden. Proceed allows society to maintain a public display gardens in the near near the Historic Museum at Fort Missoula and to sponsor Iris shows at no cost to its visitors. So you, that's happening starting at 9 a.m. and it pretty much sh should be going on all day. Most events at the Historic Museum at Fort Missoula are pretty long. So you guys can pretty much check it out anytime that day. West Montana Fair 4-H Horse Show is at um, Missoula Fairgrounds starting at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. Western Montana Fair events, 4-H uh, and open class horse shows. See the 4-H website for more information. You go to Missoula eduplace.com so it's missoula eduplace.org so that's how you find out more information robotics is at um spectrum discovery center so you get to learn about robotics and get kids interested in science using robotics and that's happening at uh the spectrum discovery center at 812 tool street starting at 10 a.m tomorrow morning and then there's fairy tales and superhero festival at carousel for missoula so at the carousel um you want to dress your kid up in a superhero or as a princess or prince, because one of the things that they try to do in the past is they try to do prince and princess festivals, but they learned that a lot of boys don't like to be princes. So a lot of times they said, okay, let's throw some superheroes in there. So it gives the option of kids dress up as superheroes or princesses, princes, if they really want to do it. Um, but yeah, it's a fairy tales and superheroes festival at a carousel for Missoula starting at 10 a.m. It's a great way to dress up your kids. Um, it's like a it's like a prequel to Halloween. It's a cool little thing. Um, paddleboard lesson at Frenchtown um, Pond State Park. This is for ages 12 and up, and forty di forty five dollars per lesson. It's an ongoing class through August. Um, noon classes are held Saturday and Tuesdays. 
And then there's a Just Add Water Party at Fort Missoula Regional Park, an epic splash party, crew activities, and squirt gun tag, kiddie pools, volleyball, and a water relay race. You'll find Generations at Play at the Fort Missoula this summer, and it's free to and open to the public at 2 p.m. in a Saturday afternoon on a 94-degree weather. It's going to be perfect time to get the kids wet. Um, tell us something that's also happened at Fort Missoula Regional Park if you guys want to stick around a little bit longer. And uh, they're jo they're join them for, I didn't see that coming, a night of storytelling. Stories are about 10 minutes long and told from memory, food games, s'mores, and fun. This is 5.30 to 8 p.m. Adults, $10. Kids, 12 and under, are getting free for the Tell Us Something family event that's for all ages starting at 5:30 at Fort Missoula Regional Park and I can't say enough about tell us something. Um, here are some of the uh, um, music events that are happening. You got Spinal Plaza at Imagination Brewing Company. It's acoustic music, live music by Captain Wilson Conspiracy at Ten Spoon Winery. Um, SJ Tucker, Lori Hudson and Belly Dancer Tempest is at 715 OAO Temple House and it's going to be folk theater. Uh, so you got James McMurtry is at Top Hat Lounge. It can be rock music, country, absolutely with Chris Moon at the Badlander. So if you're interested in EDM DJ type music, go there. Um, karaoke at BFW. So that kind of concludes everything that you need to know about what's happening for your weekend. I usually don't get too much um, interested in the um, Sunday events because there's usually not much going on there. I can skim through it just a little bit. I have a little bit of time. We're about 50 minutes into this show. So let's see. Sa -da -da. Ba -ba -da -ba -da. Yeah, no, nothing really that, yeah, nothing. Sunday brunch at DraftWorks Brewing Company, <laughs> 10 a.m. Um, modern French Pastry Adult BYOB Workshop at Taste Butch Kitchen. Cool. Um, Painting with a Twist is at Painting with a Twist at 1 p.m. Family Story Time, as always, as a public library. Um, yeah, and then Slums of Beverly Hills is uh, art film at the Rock City Theater at 8 p.m. on Sunday night. So a lot of things happening. Most people will probably be outdoors floating or getting wet. But um, I hope you guys have a great weekend. Um, um, I had had a whole bunch of technical difficulties this morning on my morning show. But um, I hope you'll be able to see this online without any problem whatsoever. So um, thanks for joining me. And I want to thank uh, Sam and Jackie. I always got to look at my cheat sheet. I'm, I'm really bad about, like, remembering names at the top of my head. I always have to – I always, like um, – <laughs> uh, now I, I'm trying to I'm thinking way too much right now that's why I shouldn't have coffee anyways uh, well hope you guys have uh, a, a fair amount of coffee but not too much coffee in the morning um, and for Wake Up Missoula I'm Scott Ranth um, please like on me on Facebook follow me on Twitter at Wake Up Missoula and you can also find me at com slash Wake Up Missoula because I'm too cheap to buy Wake Up Missoula dot org so anyways, for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. Thanks for joining me. Mm -hmm.